I thought I could tell a story about um, a time that you were very heroic and you stood up for me and you protected me from those um, youths that followed me back from the pub that one time. Oh, yes. It was one of the rare occasions growing up where genuinely I was very proud of you and, and you were, you know, the man of the house. Yeah. And I saw a very different side to you because I was working at that pub, the Spencer Arms, um, working isn't quite the word. Well, I mean, you were telling jokes to all the customers instead of giving them a drink. You got the sack in the end. That's not why I got the sack. Why did you get the sack? I got the sack because someone clicked their fingers at me and I um, oh, called yeah. them to see you next Tuesday. Yeah. Which apparently you're not allowed to do. No. Apparently the customer forgot that. is always right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this was before that. I was still working there and I remember I'd had a very hard shift and I came back and I walked across Putney Common and I was set upon by a group of feckless youths in hooded sweatshirts, a gang of, I mean, I'm making it sound like more dramatic than it was. I think they just sort of followed me back across the common. Um, and uh, I sort of hurried up, got into the house um, and didn't really know what to do because I was worried because they were loitering outside loitering with intent and I this came up to the gang me. thing is the, I mean well it was maybe something like a bunch of people on bicycles with sort of yeah they weren't like that well they, they weren't like Mad Max no maybe no. it was like two how many were there maybe two two or three let's say three so, but it could have it maybe it was two, two. It was and two they were young men well not young on Putnam like, Common which is hardly 14 yeah 15 okay. and I was maybe well to work at the pub I would have been 18 19? Yeah. So I was 19 and... So and two children, basically. <laughs> two children in the late, early, early to late evening. Yeah. Came up to you. But in the dark, you can't tell. And they could have been older. And I, I couldn't really... Because I was walking back and I didn't, I didn't have time to turn around and look. It could have been more. Right. But So I had to be, you know... But there is a chance that it was just two 13-year-old kids. Right. But it may have been a gang. For or the... say you weren't wearing your glasses, so you may have been seeing double. Okay. So, <laughs> so it was just one looked. kid. Well, it, was it could just... have been one kid. <laughs> was you were just... seeing double. You were seeing two kids. Right. Possibly. But, so it was I mean, possibly just one 13-year-old boy could have who was walking back at the same time. <laughs> and I didn't have my glasses on. Yeah. Turned around and saw him and thought it was yeah. a gang. So anyway, I was quite distressed. <laughs> I was very distressed and very scared and I, uh, I ran in and I found you and you were just getting ready to go to bed upstairs. I think I was in bed, wasn't I? You may have been in bed. Yeah, I think I was. I think I'd gone to bed. Yeah, so that... I'd gone to bed, yes. so it was probably... Six o'clock? Six o'clock. Six o'clock? Well, when did you go it to bed? It was about half past ten. Half past six, half past seven. It was half You'd past watched... ten, course to eleven, and I decided to have an early night. So it's half past ten. So you've been in bed for four and a half hours. <laughs> so you're in quite a deep sleep. You've watched Countdown. You've gone to bed. You're in a very deep sleep. I, I rouse you from your sleep. Um, and mummy wasn't there. That's right. She, she wasn't, was, I, I think, staying with Nigel Havers that night or whatever she was doing. She mm -hmm. wasn't there. And so I wake you up and I'm like, Daddy, there's some youths or possibly a youth <laughs> outside. They're loitering and they won't go away. And you wouldn't get up out of bed. I went over to the window. I saw that these kids were sort of stood around outside. Like, I think one of them was having a cigarette. Yeah, I think that was true. And they were just, you know, they weren't doing anything, but they were loitering with intent and they were sort of looking through the window and I was like, oh, maybe, you know, this could kick off. They might want to break in here and steal some, you know, um, China ducks or whatever you had on display at that time. You know, I don't know what young kids like that want to steal, but... Sweets, probably. Well, no, not there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Maybe these Chocolates ones. Maybe these ones wanted a Winston Churchill Toby jug. Possibly. And they saw it through the window and thought we're going to break in there and have that because that'll have a high street value on the black market. All those black market Winston Churchill Toby jugs that you see. Anyway, they were loitering. 
you would get out out of bed and then I saw one of them flick a cigarette over the wall into one of daddy's flower beds and I think it hit one of your hydrangeas or one of your like precious plants and I said daddy one of them just flicked a cigarette butt into the flower bed and it was like you were a man possessed like ripping off the the duvet you stormed over to the window you were like those little fuckers and you grabbed the dressing gown you threw the dressing gown on stormed down the stairs i was like whoa it's all gonna kick off here open the door you confronted these youths you were like get off my property you're like shouting at them and at this point i was actually quite scared because you know suddenly in the cold out of day you're there you're on your own you're in a robe, you're outside, you're surrounded by these guys. Mm -hmm. I probably wasn't offering you a huge amount of support. No, but I was protecting you. You That's were protecting what, me. That what what's lions do when they've got their cubs. Yes. They protect them. Yes. They you, fight for them, and that's what I was doing. You were like out Mufasa, there. a yeah. proud exactly. lion. Of exactly. The head of the pride. Yeah. And you were there and you confronted them. And yeah. then these youths, though, I, I, I've got to say it, they did not look that intimidated by your, no, your they did. no they didn't because yeah. one of them went fuck off granddad and and at that point they sort of squared up to you and I was like oh my god you're going to get punched you're going to get knocked out I'm going to see my dad um, like beaten up by a load of youths it's going to be my fault it's going to be awful it's going to be really humiliating and really sad but fate was on our side that night because it was I don't know if you remember a very windy night and because you'd gone down the stairs quite quickly and chucked that dressing gown on in some haste, I don't think you'd had time to properly tie up the drawstrings off the dressing gown. And as you were stood there, and as one of them was literally about to punch you out cold, a big gust of cold wind shot up the dressing gown and it just billowed open. <laughs> like, exposing you in just stark bollock naked. I mean, I could only see it from behind, so obviously I just saw the, the dressing gown open and just your testicles just swaying gently underneath. And these guys just turned around and recoiled and you sort of advanced a bit. You were trying to get the the flannels of the, um, of the dressing gown back down, but because it was one of those silk dressing gowns, you couldn't really get a proper purchase of it. So instead of getting it shut, it would then billow back open and it was almost like you were fanning it to draw more attention to your nakedness. It was like when you see a swan attack someone with its wings like that and then the, just the neck craning down. And these kids, I've never seen children run faster. They were absolutely terrified as you did your swan dance down the street <laughs> they were screaming and we never saw them again ne every night after that when I walked back from the pub no trouble never got followed it was very very effective and I was very proud of you for standing up for me and scaring them away with your swan dance your angry swan dance it's a very good deterrent very very effective they should use it they need to get rid of those protesters in Oxford Circus, just send you in a dressing gown. Instead of like a riot cannon, they could just have you disperse crowds at football stadiums. I think you're getting a bit carried away now. And I don't believe half of that story, but I do remember my dressing gown coming unbuttoned or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. But the rest of it, I, I, I don't know. I don't remember all that. Maybe it was an adrenaline thing. Maybe you were quite... The children did run away, I have to tell you. Yes, they did. I got them away. There was actually more than one. I think there were three, possibly. Mm. And they were screaming quite loud. <laughs> but I don't know. I also seem to remember that there was one of our neighbours who was... Um, she quite liked walking her dog late at night and she happened to be passing at that exact moment and looked over and saw the swan in all its glory and she never really looked at you in the same way ever again. Remember we used to see her at Christmas parties and stuff and she could never make eye contact with you. Because I think she'd seen, she'd seen enough. She'd caught an eyeful that night. 
and was never really able to address a word to you again. She was quite traumatised. We all were by that night. I mean, to be quite honest, it was a blessing in disguise because she was a crashing ball, that woman. What was her name? Um, Don't say her name. Don't say her name. All right. Come see my new show, Stood Up, solo stand-up tour. Just me, a microphone, and you guys. I've got rid of the sidekick. No more dead weight. I'm certainly not the dead weight in our relationship. We're a double act, and I provide the comedy. Right, we're not a double act. I am a stand-up comedian in my own right, okay? So please come see me on my solo stand-up tour. He won't be there. That's so 